Keystone species come in all shapes and sizes, and sometimes appearances can be deceptive. Not only could a species with a huge impact initially seem to be quite insignificant, it could even be mistaken as harmful. Last time we looked into European flat oysters in Scotland, but today we're all the way over in Ecuador to look at a species that couldn't be more different. Of course, in a place like the Amazon there are countless species we could talk about, but we'll save all the charismatic birds, snakes, monkeys and frogs for another time, because here we have a tree killer. This is the shortleaf fig, known locally as the Matapalo, but you may know it by a common name it shares with several other fig species, the Strangler Fig. While I'm still at home in the UK, Duarte has been busy filming a series of videos at our project site in Ecuador. Those will start releasing soon, but for now we have someone on location. So to continue our conversation about keystone species, I want to introduce you to a rather unexpected one, and that is the Strangler Fig. And I know we're next to a house, but this was a particularly striking individual. I needed to show you this because you can see essentially the palm is being completely enveloped by the strangler fig. And this will eventually kill the tree. It will kill the palm tree. But it so happens that the strangler fig is a keystone species. It, it's really important in its ecosystem and it supports a wide variety of species. So in this video today, we want to explore that a bit further. This plant is a hemi epiphyte. It starts its life high up in the canopy of a host tree and grows up towards the light while growing its roots downwards, either along the host tree trunk or through the air. Eventually these aerial roots make contact with the soil, rapidly growing into the ground and rooting the fig to the rainforest floor, while the roots expand and thicken to become more like interweaving tree trunks. This method of growing allows the fig to avoid the harsh competition for sunlight, space and nutrients on the rainforest floor, instead taking advantage of a tree that already won that battle. As it grows over time, it will completely encircle and constrict the host tree, preventing the main trunk from expanding. The leaves of the fig will also be outcompeting the host tree's foliage while this happens, ultimately resulting in the fig cutting off its host supply of nutrients and killing it. The host tree then decays, providing nutrients for the fig tree in the notoriously poor rainforest soil. It's pretty easy to see where it got its more sinister name from. It's a killer tree that kills trees. So here you can see the, one of the reasons why the Matapalo is considered a keystone species. You can see all of this fruit around us and all of the, the little fruit flies that, that, that are here as well. And Freddy was saying that maybe you can explain Freddy with the... Um... Yeah, the Matapalo, it's a oh, stronger fix. People think it's bad because it's killing other trees. But if you look from another, another site, it is important because it's providing food for many animals and birds, especially birds and bats as well, you know. You look, you can see hundreds of tiny seeds can be eaten of the birds when the birds sh sh uh, make poop on somewhere, sitting on the, on the main tall trees, Matapalo will start to grow there. So that's but, how they spread around? Yeah. But then that's also really nice because they, you know, so they, they kill some trees, but they also provide food for so many animals. Yeah, so so they're really important species. Really and, important. And it's what kind of animals will be eating this? Oh, toucans and tanagers and squirrel monkeys and all, all, all monkeys, let me say, and birds. And on the ground, I mean, uh, rodents, like, like uh, wanta, baka. And here are also the fruit flies as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's Globally, fig species are known to feed over 1,200 vertebrate species, and the Matapalo is no exception. This species fruits year-round, and provides a hugely important food source for many fruit-eating species, especially when other fruiting trees aren't in season and food is more scarce. Without this food source, the rainforest frugivore populations would likely plummet, and as other fruiting plants rely on those species for seed dispersal, you could definitely argue that they too rely on the fig to thrive. This means that the fig supports far more trees than it kills just because it produces its fruit at different times, and the reason for this unusual fruiting pattern is because of the fig's peculiar pollination method. Like all figs, this tree has a mutualistic relationship with a local species of fig wasp, in this case this latter name that I can definitely pronounce but choose not to. Rather than the usual flowers you might imagine, figs produce cyconia, which in a heavily simplified sense for the purposes of this video, are like an inverted fruit slash flower that technically contains
contains multiple tiny flowers. The only way for a pollinator to access the flowers within the syconium is to squeeze through the ostiole, which is basically an interlocking entrance that loosens slightly when ready to be pollinated. Each species of fig has its own species of fig wasp that's uniquely able to get through the ostiole. However, despite only being a few millimetres long and well adapted for the purpose, it's still a tight fit and they'll typically lose their wings and antenna in the process. Some species of fig wasps even bite their own limbs off to get through, and it's quite common to find dead wasps stuck partway through the ostiole. But this risk is worth it, as the wasp relies entirely on these fruits throughout its life cycle. This wasp and the matapalo are completely dependent on each other, and this method of pollination is exactly why the fig trees flower and fruit asynchronously while other fruiting species don't. The wasps have very short lifespans, so if there weren't any trees ready to receive the wasps when they emerge, the pollinator wasps would quickly go extinct locally, and the fig tree in turn wouldn't be able to reproduce. At all stages of their lives, these wasps are also preyed upon by numerous insectivorous species that would lose a food source without the fig tree. So could you call this tiny wasp that doesn't even have a common name a keystone species in turn? Since they're mutually dependent, you could definitely make an argument that the wasp is responsible for the impact of the fig as much as the fig is responsible for the wasp's impact. This is just one of many examples of how complex ecosystems are and the limitations of terms like these, but I'm supposed to be talking about a tree here and I've probably derailed this enough. Of course, like any tree, the fig provides a habitat for a huge variety of species, but when the fig does kill its host, its impact only continues to expand. The dead host will rot away, supporting species that rely on deadwood in the process, and once it's gone, the fig tree will continue to stand and grow, with its interweaving and now hollow trunk providing the perfect hiding and nesting spots for many species in the rainforest. Out of all of this, the only loser seems to be the host tree of the fig, and while that's definitely true, there have been some studies that suggest trees with strangler figs growing around them are more stable during storms, and less likely to be uprooted. I'm not sure how much of a comfort that would be while slowly being starved of nutrients, but it's a very thin silver lining for the host at least. Of course, the fig is still far from a desirable lodger, which has led to several species developing some interesting adaptations to keep them off. You can see the little hole coming out, and the cecropia trees basically it's keep clear. Nothing is growing on the trunk because they, they have a symbiotic relation with a, a little yellow ant. They kill any other plants growing on the on the on the cecropia, and that's why cecropia is providing home. You know, it's like a little apartment they're living. You can see little hole <laughs> when you drive. Look at this. They, they live in, in inside and decompose so quick. So this tree is also a pretty interesting one that uh, Freddie showed us and what it does here essentially is every year it essentially sheds its bark to avoid any other vines or plants or animals of climbing on it and it gets this like really smooth uh, trunk in the end so it, it looks quite unusual and it looks like you know it's lost its clothes and its clothes just fallen down just like that. When hearing that this tree kills other trees, you might assume that the species has a negative impact on this environment. But ultimately, the strangler fig directly supports hundreds if not thousands of species in this ecosystem, as both a source of food and as a habitat. It's safe to say that if it were to go extinct, you'd also see a vast ripple effect of other extinctions. But fortunately, this tree is listed as least concern and is about as safe as a species possibly can be. However, instead this entire ecosystem is what needs protecting. I'm sure you don't need reminding about the extent of deforestation in the Amazon and the need to protect it and its amazing biodiversity, but that's exactly why we're here. Thanks to the support and funding of our members, we purchased a rainforest in Ecuador back in August 2023, which protects around 200 hectares. The land was purchased under the advice and management of Freddy, our new colleague who spoke earlier in the video. He's spearheading all of the work we're undertaking here, and as someone from the Amazon who's dedicated his life to protecting this rainforest, it couldn't be in better hands. Next up in this series we'll be heading to Portugal, where we'll find a misunderstood keystone species that's become synonymous with death. Thank you for watching, and until next time, cheers.